So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we'll review the brand new Leica M11. Note you can find timestamps in the description down below. You can also scrub through the video to script to a more relevant section if you'd like. But with that said, let's get started. Released in the spring of 2022, the Leica M11, also known as the Type 2416, comes to market as the successor to the M10, released five years prior. Like the M10, it's a full-frame rangefinder that pairs digital photography with an analog experience that dates back to the original M3, released in 1954. But despite the similarities to the M10 at first glance, this latest edition comes packing a lot of changes. On paper, it brings a brand new 60 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor, making it among the highest resolution full frame cameras on the market. Yet Leica has also added an expanded ISO range, an updated processor, new battery, built-in storage, dedicated metering, and an updated touchscreen. Thankfully though, it still retains the classic look modeled from its film predecessors. So it looks like Leica's keeping to their traditions and their understated design. Still, how does this camera stack up to the already excellent M10 or the high resolution M10R? And are the updates justifiable given the new starting price? Let's find out. So what are some of the goods, bads, and uglies of the Leica M11? Let's start with the pros, starting with image quality. It obtains a brand new 60.3 megapixel full frame backside illuminated CMOS sensor and the updated Maestro 3 image processor. So gone is its predecessor's 24 megapixel CMOS sensor and Maestro 2 processor. And it now stands as the highest resolution full frame camera Leica offers, besting even the M10R by 50%. Leica's also added a dual layer UV slash IR or infrared filter rather than just a traditional infrared filter alone, and this combination helps absorb these wavelengths to improve the camera's rendering and peripheral sharpness. Overall, the image quality this camera delivers is outstanding and closely matches the leading premium full-frame cameras with such a resolution. The 14-bit DNG RAW images offer extraordinary level of detail, even after heavy cropping with minimal compression artifacts and excellent latitude for post-processing. Leica also claims the camera delivers upwards of 14 stops of working dynamic range, and indeed, with the updated base ISO of 64, images have natural highlight roll-offs and smooth tones. Yet they also have that hard to describe film light bokeh and natural color rendering like is known for. As such, the M11 now stands as their best performing camera to date as far as image quality is concerned. Leica has also added several resolution options for the camera's DNG files, the 60 megapixel large DNG, 36 megapixel medium DNG, and 18 megapixel small DNG. And interestingly, they've chosen to create these smaller files by sampling the full sensor readout and downscaling rather than using line skipping or a subsampling technique. Or put another way, the camera combines multiple pixels to increase the overall light efficiency. The result is that images in these modes have a better signal to noise ratio and reduce moiré. They also improve the dynamic range upwards to 15 stops, increase the continuous shooting speeds, and reduce the overall file sizes. So it's quite a sensible option for photographers to avoid some of the storage demands when working with the 60 megapixel mode when it's not absolutely necessary. Necessary. The M11 also features an in-camera crop mode, useful in some situations for framing, but it's exclusive to the 60 megapixel large DNG mode. Here the camera limits the angle of view of the lens, and that results in a 1.3 times crop at 36 megapixels, or a 1.8 times crop at 18 megapixels. And the camera displays the frame lines in the live view, so you can frame and compensate accordingly. Note this crop applies to DNG and JPEG images, and it's not a hard crop that deletes the pixels for DNG files. Instead, it's a tag in the metadata, so you can override it later in post-processing. However, for JPEGs, the crop is permanent, so keep that in mind. The Maestro 3 processor also brings multi-field or matrix metering through the rangefinder to the M series for the first time, and the camera now uses its sensor rather than a discrete internal meter to measure light reflecting off the shutter. So now it confidently performs exposure metering, and you can now focus on the subject and not hassle with metering the scene and fiddling with the exposure compensation dial. Additionally, the M11 becomes the first M-series camera with an electronic shutter, and Leica added the new hybrid mode, letting the camera automatically select either the mechanical or the electronic shutter, depending on the shutter speed you're using. But you can shoot with the electronic shutter exclusively if you want to shoot silently. It's also a great option if you're going to shoot 
outdoors at wide open apertures without having to resort to an ND filter. With the Maestro 3 processor, the camera also gains a generous 3 gigabyte buffer up from 2 gigabytes. And given the high resolution sensor and large file size, it offers reasonably competent shooting performance. Granted, it's not the intended way most photographers would likely use this camera. Nonetheless, it provides four and a half frames per second, delivering 15 DNG files at full resolution, 30 at 36 megapixels, or unlimited if you drop down to the 18 megapixel crop mode. Now for battery performance. The M11 gains a new battery, the BP SCL7, rather than the older SCL5 used on its predecessor. This change yields a generous 233% increase in longevity. Now the camera offers 700 shots per charge under regular use, or 1700 shots using the rangefinder exclusively, making it directly on par with some of the best cameras in this regard. So it's unlikely any users would have difficulty getting through a full day shoot of heavy use and then some. The camera also supports charging via its USB-C port, helpful when traveling. Now for low light performance. Low light performance on the M11 is excellent and on par with the best high resolution full frame cameras around. It features a native ISO range from ISO 64 to 50,000, extending the bottom range to a third stop lower than the M10. And photos show excellent detail with minimal noise up to ISO 3200. At the more mid range ISOs, there is some fine tightly patterned noise, which progressively gets more rough as you stop up, but it's not until ISO 12,500 does the noise become distracting with minor color artifacts and reduced sharpness. Still, even ISO 25,000 offers a fair bit of detail, so it's usable when necessary. Note, you can use the 36 megapixel or 18 megapixel capture modes to produce even less noise and correct any color cast and false color artifacts. Overall, in this regard, Leica has excelled. The M11's refined sensor surprisingly delivers low light performance that closely matches the M10, yet it does so with nearly three times the pixel count and resolution. So not only do you get superior resolution overall, but you can also also rely heavily on this camera in challenging lighting, and that's a massive win for Leica M shooters. Now for focusing performance. As a rangefinder, the M11 doesn't offer autofocusing. Instead, you'll focus manually using the camera's optical viewfinder and its small front-facing rangefinder window using split image. And you'll acquire focus by moving the focus lever until the subject overlay is aligned. This technique takes some getting used to, but it's extremely accurate in practice. However, the M11 does grab some helpful focusing aids from the M10 if you use the camera in live view. Here you get focus magnification available in three or six times, and peaking available in red, green, blue, or white. You can also double tap the screen to initiate focus magnification at the selected point, which is helpful. Plus, Leica's electronically stabilized live view, smoothing out any jitters or camera motion, making things even easier there. Note the camera only applies electronic stabilization to the live view feed alone, not the resulting images. So you'll want to use proper camera technique to mitigate any motion blur. Overall, focusing on this camera is intuitive, but does take time to master. Thankfully, once you master it, you'll realize it's faster than manually focusing on most mirrorless systems using focus peaking, microprism, or split image assist. The live view experience is also entirely usable, although it doesn't play to the camera's core strengths. Live view as a whole isn't as accurate as using the viewfinder, so it's better served as a general guide for acquiring focus. Still, having this functionality on a rangefinder does make it easier when working on a tripod or when you're shooting at awkward angles, especially given the camera has a large screen and high resolution than previous models, so it's a nice crutch to have when you need it. Now for the display in viewfinder. The M11 obtains the same optical viewfinder configuration as the M10, so it too features a 0.73 times magnification and an integrated lens coupled rangefinder using the split field image to help focus accurately. With a 28 millimeter equivalent angle of view, the viewfinder also shows more of the surroundings when using a medium telephoto or longer lens, which is great for anticipating action. Yet it also houses a set of bright line frames, LED overlays that show various angles of view from different focal length configurations. These frame lines are easily visible, even in very dim or bright light, and they change automatically as you attach different M mount lenses so you can compose accurately. Otherwise, the viewfinder also has a digital display that indicates both the shutter speed and ISO in red symbols, similar to how it works on Leica's film cameras. 
Overall, the rangefinder implementation is excellent and closely follows the M10 nicely. It offers outstanding clarity, a wide angle of view, and a comfortable working magnification. The result is an incredibly focusing and viewing experience in most situations. Otherwise, the M11 also features a three inch rear touchscreen LCD with a Gorilla Glass coating like the M10, but it offers more than double its resolution. In this case, 124% to be exact. And it now stands at 2.33 million dots, up from 1.04 million dots. The LCD offers striking colors, which are both rich and deep. It's also bright enough to use outdoors comfortably, and it's very capable of displaying the images taken on the M11's high-end sensor. The LCD also obtains touchscreen support from the M10, and it grabs many common gestures, including double tap to zoom, pinch to zoom, dragging and swiping in playback, or adjusting the quick menu. Overall, the display on this camera is excellent and leaves little room for complaints. Now on to the user interface. The M11 attains a similar menu system as the SL2 and Q2 models, organized into five pages with six settings, totaling a mere 26 options in total. And this menu is accessible by double-clicking the menu button or tapping the three-bar icon in the bottom right hand corner of the status screen. Speaking of the status screen, it's like a version of a quick menu, and this single page houses 12 of the most common options like metering, drive, file format, and much more. Nevertheless, since the M11 is a photography-oriented camera, the menu is rather bare bones, but in typical Leica fashion, the organization, hierarchy, and naming conventions are all immediately clear. And the overall user experience on this camera is excellent. The menus are clean, modern, and easy to navigate, especially compared to the complex complex designs offered by other camera manufacturers, so newcomers to the system should find this camera refreshing, easy to navigate, and quick to master. The camera also obtains the programmable favorites menu, a customizable menu page that houses all of your most used settings, and double tapping the menu button recalls this menu first. Externally, the M11 has a broadly similar design to the M10 with nearly identical dimensions. With that, it has a top-mounted ISO dial, a shutter speed dial with settings from 1 4,000th of a second to bulb, but due to the small size, some of the incremental settings for ISO aren't available on the dial, but you can access the third stop increments by using the status screen and the M option on the dial. Either way, having access to all the exposure settings makes for an immediate and direct shooting experience. Otherwise, the camera also obtains the M10's front-facing image field selector switch to adjust the bright line frame pairs. And it also keeps the M10's three-button rear layout and rear command dial integrated into the thumb rest. But the rear dial now supports a push-in function, which you can customize to act as a third custom button. However, Leica did add a new unlabeled function button on the right corner by the shutter release and you can customize this button to one of 28 different menu settings available in the main menu. But gone is the front-facing custom button available on the M10, so it's more of a location change of anything. Still, this new position is superior to the old and easier to access when shooting. Leica's also removed the camera's base plate, a controversial move to some longtime fans. Instead, it attains the same bottom design from the SL and Q ranges. Nevertheless, it does provide more direct access to the battery and SD card slot, which you can access by pulling the bottom lever. And this design simplifies the process and inevitably speeds up the workflow of changing either component since you don't have to unscrew the base plate first. Internally though, the M11 features a brass or aluminum top plate depending on the color you select and a magnesium alloy chassis. But both models are wrapped in a sleek leatherette covering. Granted, the black model does weigh 110 grams less, standing at 455 grams without the battery. So that color has the advantage there. Otherwise, both models feature rubber seals internally to help protect against some adverse elements. But the M11 isn't officially dust or weather sealed. Nevertheless, the construction is comprehensive and outstandingly durable, and it feels pretty weighty and solid in hand, but surprisingly comfortable as well. Leica's also released a dedicated hand grip for this camera with a large front grip, which will improve its handling. And I've tested this and it does definitely improve the handling. But crucially, it also has an integrated Arca Swiss thread to attach these type of tripod heads without needing a quick release plate. The grip also maintains unrestricted access to the battery compartment and USB-C port. So it's an accessory to consider if you have larger hands. The shutter release button on the M11 is also threaded, so you can attach a soft release button or a traditional screw cable if desired. And like the M10, it too has a hot shoe that interfaces with flashes up to a sync speed of 1 over 1 80th seconds. And like it's added this setting to the shutter speed dial. 
Now onto some niche features and extras the M11 offers. It features built-in dual-band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2 connectivity, letting you connect wirelessly to a smartphone or tablet through the free Leica Photos companion app. There you can geotag images using the camera's Bluetooth connection, or you can transfer photos and enable live view shooting, or you can adjust ISO, file format, metering, and shutter speed. The design of the app is clean, simple, and direct. Plus the connection is very consistent with minimal lag, so it's powerful enough to act as a secondary screen and it's a great tool if you're shooting on a tripod and need more flexibility. The camera also features 64 gigabytes of built-in storage, supporting redundancy, overflow, and individual recording. You can also transfer images from the internal storage to the SD card at any time without needing a computer and configure it freely through the menus. This level of flexibility is excellent, especially in moments when you forget an SD card at home. It also features a USB-C port that supports both image transfer and USB charging. Leica also includes an MFI certified lightning cable, letting you connect the camera to an iPhone or iPad directly. Interestingly, this connection automatically opens the Leica Photos app. Still, the wired connection is an excellent means to transfer photos without relying on Wi-Fi alone, perfect for a mobile first workflow. Yet you'll get superior reliability and better transfer speeds. Note this lightning cable that's included doesn't support charging or syncing other Apple devices. The camera also obtains the level gauge, a digital level used to correct the horizon, and it obtains exposure clipping, and you can customize the upper limits to better gauge your exposure in live view. It also has interval shooting to create time lapses, and you can customize the number of frames, the interval between them, and the countdown. Like the M10, it also features exposure bracketing, customizable between three or five shots, and one to three EV stops. Also, like the M10, it obtains several unique minimum shutter speeds for auto ISO. In this case, 1 over F, 1 over 2 F, or 1 over 4 F. In these settings, the camera detects the focal length of the attached lens, then uses that value to create the minimum shutter speed. So for example, using a 75 millimeter lens changes the minimum shutter speed to 1 1 1 1 50th, or 1 300 second. And it's a clever and unique option that'll guarantee you avoid camera shake regardless of the lens used. But with the pros of the Leica M11, out of the way. What are the cons of the M11? Let's start with image quality. Unfortunately, this camera has quite a long startup time, which averages around four seconds. That's four seconds of patiently waiting for the M11 to boot before taking a picture. And while that sounds small on paper, that could very well mean you miss a decisive moment when shooting photojournalism or street photography. I didn't notice this while using the camera at first, but when I later compared it to the X100V, the poor man's rangefinder inspired mirrorless camera. The difference is enormous, so keep that in mind beforehand. The electronic shutter on this camera, while silent, also doesn't scan particularly fast, so you'll see rolling shutter distortion when capturing pictures of subjects moving across the frame. In those situations, using the mechanical shutter is best, and instead use the electronic shutter for a more static medium where you want to reduce the ambient lighting. It's important to note that with 60 megapixels, this camera will really test your shooting style, and the resolution it has will highlight any downsides of poor technique. So if your focus is off or there's camera shake during the shot, you'll quickly see those mistakes in post-processing. Now, on to video capabilities. Like the M10, this camera also lacks video capabilities outright, and it's strictly a photographer's camera, so keep that in mind. Now, as far as autofocus, as a rangefinder, this camera lacks any autofocus functionality whatsoever. Instead, you'll focus manually through the optical viewfinder or in live view, but it's important to highlight that achieving precise focus on this camera can be tricky, especially if you use a telephoto lens or a wide aperture value. It's also challenging to focus on a subject if they're not dead center in the frame, since that's where the rangefinder patch lies, and a mechanically coupled rangefinder is only so accurate in those situations. The result is that you rely heavily on the focus recomposing technique on this camera. The problem is that recomposing ends up shifting the focus plane and usually results in soft, slightly out of focus images. And with a 60 megapixel sensor, you'll definitely see the lack of detail since this amount of resolution makes that problem obvious. So you'll have to continually make a trade off between tack sharp photos or those with a more interesting composition, not ideal. Nevertheless, focusing through the optical viewfinder is far more accurate than live view. So it's still the best option despite the shortcomings. 
Like the M10, it too lacks a tilting display. Instead, it's fixed onto the rear plate, which isn't particularly helpful when shooting at a high or low angle, so be prepared to squat and get dirty. Also like the M10, it too lacks an electronic viewfinder, and it's not integrated into the optical viewfinder as Fujifilm has done with the X100 lineup. So if you want any EVF functionality, you'll have to purchase the optional Visoflex 2 viewfinder. This accessory connects to the camera's hot shoe, but it does tilt and offers a resolution of 3.7 million dots adding much needed versatility when working at low angles. However, it does take away much of the joy of the rangefinder experience, and it's also quite expensive, so keep that in mind. It's also important to point out that while the eye relief on the viewfinder is good, you may find it difficult to see all the frame lines when using a wide angle lens. So if you want perfect framing, you may want to switch to live view after acquiring focus. Like the M10, the touchscreen still doesn't support menu navigation, so you still have to use the D-pad. This continues to be strange since the touchscreen works perfectly with the status menu. It's also important to point out this camera doesn't have a front grip, so you'll need a neck strap for longer outings to reduce any hand fatigue if you have larger hands. Like the M10, it offers a top-mounted ISO dial, mimicking an old-school film rewind knob, but it's too stiff and it's difficult to grip and pop out. It also requires a particular technique, so it's quite a hassle when you want to change a setting quickly. Standard tripod plates will also block the release lever for the battery compartment, so you'll first have to remove the camera from the plate to access these components, and that's a tedious process. The M11 also officially lacks weather sealing, which is a shame considering the camera's price point and target audience. Of course, it's hard to argue that it's masterfully built and incredibly rugged, but without proper weather sealing, you're still risking it during a sudden downpour. It also lacks in-body image stabilization, lacks a microphone or headphone output, it lacks an HDMI port, and lastly, it lacks in-camera HDR. So is the Leica M11 a good camera for you? Yes, current Leica M10 or earlier owners should consider upgrading. The M11 combines all of the already excellent features in the M10, yet it brings dedicated metering and a much better sensor that outperforms both the M10 and the M10R. These features alone make it a fantastic upgrade. In the end, Leica's M11 continues to blur the lines between analog and digital, and it melds a high-end design with a traditional photographic experience that pays its dues to the original Leica M film cameras, yet it also modernizes the lineup with a high resolution sensor that brings outstanding image quality and low light power. Plus, it boasts incredible battery life, built-in storage, revamped metering, and superb wireless connectivity. As such, the M11 brings a complete range of features and unmatched flexibility that make it the ultimate M. So if you're in the market for a timeless rangefinder experience with the comforts of digital photography, here is your camera. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the content of it valuable, insightful, and you learned something meaningful here. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've overlooked something in the course of the video, please let me know down below. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography, P. Come.